Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. These are uh, the Sog Aegis AT, um, which is, I guess, an evolution of the Sog I guess we're going to talk all about this. I'm going to link these guys right down below. They are definitely available. And as you can see here, they come in a, a variety of different colors. And there's far more than what's being shown here. I want to thank Austin and Mason for sending their knives in. I ended up with two of these because I said yes to two different people and forgetting that I had already said yes to one. So I have two. That's fine. Uh, these are great examples. And yes, these will go back to their owners once I'm finished reviewing them. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. <coughs> and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm getting my voice back, but it's not perfect. So we're still kind of in that weird sort of library. You know, that's that's the vibe. <laughs> Is the close, close up and personal in the library right now. Um... I'm going to just keep the blue one out here, I think, for size comparisons. We're just going to do a couple up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. As you can see here, it's definitely a full-size knife, but most of it's in the handle. Cutting edge. Uh, close to the rat. <coughs> How about the bug out? Okay, there you go. Cutting edge. Um, the bug out literally has the... No, the bug out has more cutting edge than the say, Aegis 18. You can see here... Um, Wow, lots of extra handle room. Um, last but not least, let's do the Spyderco Para 3. I think that'll be a good one. Here's an example of a knife that has an insane blade to handle ratio. And by insane, I mean a lot more handle than blade. Um, I think that SOG is even crazier. A little bit more blade and a lot more handle. Okay, let's go ahead and do um, the uh, carry profile. Now, action real quick. This is an assisted knife. I had not one, but two people tell me that they thought that this was a switchblade or that the mechanism somehow made it a switchblade. No, uh, this is an assisted knife. I don't know why anybody think that it's, it's just assisted. You push the thumb stud and it's, right? It, there's no button. It's not like you push a button. You just lift the, the uh, thumb studs and it is assisted, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but okay. Uh, handle thickness, mm, it's a little bit thicker than the Spyderco Pair 3, not crazy. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3. <coughs> you can see here, it's about the same length as the PM2, in fact. Is it longer? Oh my god. It's longer than the PM2. No, not weird. Not, even including the little switch nub and the top of the knife. Not quite as tall, but it's close. Um, so thicker, longer, nearly as tall, right? Materials. GRN, what is that? It's glass reinforced nylon. Very similar to fiberglass reinforced nylon. In fact, Google has them together and it's like GRN slash FRN. You know, I think that SOG's marketing does a good job of convincing people it's a special material. No, it's fancy plastic. It's the same stuff that you know, a, a lot of knife people complain about because it feels really cheap and that there's no exception here. It, it feels really cheap, but it's plenty durable and it'll work just fine. Um, the, uh, blade is D2. I mean, it's cryo D2, but cryo, slightly increased toughness, slightly increased corrosion resistance, and apparently slightly better edge retention. When I say slightly, I mean like almost nothing from what I understand from cryo treatments, but okay. Wait, we are looking at steel liners on the inside, which is nice. It really helps, you know, the cheapness of GRN or FRN or whatever the heck, you know, it's only mitigated if you have full steel liners, and that's the cheap feeling anyway. And so that helps a little bit. It definitely feels a little bit more solid than, say, the standard bug out. 4.44 ounces, not crazy. Uh, doesn't bother me, but might bother you. Just, you know, consider the types of pants you're wearing uh, and consider where you live. <coughs> so we didn't measure this guy, and we'll go ahead and do that right now. I'm sure you guys are like, why are you not measuring it? The overall length of the Song Aegis AT is coming in at 8 inches. The blade length is coming in just above 3 inches, which I'll tell you why that's so annoying. This thing clearly has a blade-to-handle ratio that is not common in the knife world. 
not everything is one-to-one. -one. In fact, it's very rare that it's truly one-to-one. -one. But like, what's a good blade-to-handle ratio knife, right? A normal, like, okay, the Rat 2. Or maybe that's not even a, a good example. The, the uh, Ritter Hoke, right? It's pretty good. Eight inches, three and a half inch blade. If you're gonna go nuts with the handle, and then you're gonna, you know, have this short little blade, make it 2.9 inches so that it's at least legal in those areas where they have a three inch blade law. You know, go out of your way to make this gigantic handle and this short little blade, at least make it something that people in those areas, right, they, they went to 3.1 on this thing. Just measure it again. Yeah, or just like, yeah, it's, it's definitely over three. Like, just barely though. That's annoying. There's, there's, there's a bunch of annoying features on this knife, but that right there, it's like, why? There's nails on a chalkboard. Like, come on. I've got plenty of room. Can we spare just a bit to make this a 2.9 inch blade if you're going to do that? Right? Oh, sacrifice some cutting edge though. I don't know. Do we care at that point? Okay. So, um, we have a thumb stud opener. It has a little safety switch back here. You can click it down. It is very, um, you know, that snap is very, you, you know that it's locked in right? It's going to be a deliberate action. It's not like a goofy kind of floppy switch. No, it, that thing is solid. You're not going to be able to deploy that thing, right? So you, <laughs> the problem is switching it up and you're going to have to turn it and use your thumb, right? I can't, for whatever reason, my index finger doesn't want to, right? So anyways, it's ready to go. And then it fires. The, the force of the blade coming out of there, that's, it, it's powerful, right? Very powerful. Uh, the issue I have with it is the fact that it is assisted. Why? Why is it assisted? We, we don't need that, right? I mean, there's still people who are convinced that like this, this right here. Well, that's tactical advantage. That's speed. Let me show you a magic trick. Here's a manually, a, a knife that opens manually. Ta-da! Um, the tactical speed is in your imagination it's in your head um we don't I, I i don't think that we need assisted knives anymore now some people would argue that it's just cool right it's just cool factor okay i can totally get on board with that in fact i'm you know somebody who uh purchases knives for the same reason right it's the whole like is there really that much of a difference between an assisted knife and a switchblade kind of thing not really it feels cool to push a button right and have the blade fly out on a true switch blade. But do we need it? No, no, because blades will deploy, you know, whether you have this sort of assisted feature or it's just a manually opening knife, they, we can deploy them at the same speed, right? The difference is, is that it's more convenient to close a manual knife because you're not working against a spring. In this case, I'm having to make sure that I'm really holding on to the thing and pushing down on the spine and holding it keeping enough pressure here and enough meat of my thumb on the blade so it doesn't, whoops, I slipped and I threw it. And, oh, it, you know, oh, look out, Carol. <laughs> like, yeah, we don't want, you know, no. On a manual knife, you close it. You're not working against a spring, so you can let go of the blade, right? You can totally let go of it. Don't do this, right? But you can, you can let go of it and then close it like this, and it's fine. Assisted knives annoy me. Um, I don't think we need them anymore. I think knives should either be manual or they should be true switch blades. I think assisted knives are just kind of gimmicky and truth be told, assisted knives are how most of us got into this game, right? How many of us went to Walmart and looked at that flashy black tactical thing that was tanto and serrated? Guess what? It was assisted. I've told this story many times. The knife that technically started it all for me was a uh, Kershaw Blur. Tanto, serrated. I was like, man, that's what the Ninja Marine Space Force used. Like, ha that has to be like the knife of knives. $56 though, my goodness. $56 for a pocket knife, can you imagine? That must be made out of some serious stuff. I bet the blade steel is adamantium for $56, right? You know what, I'll take it. <laughs> Come on, as we all, we've all been there, right? Anyways, it's assisted and it bothers me. XR lock, pretty cool. It operates very similarly to the Axis lock from Benchmade or the Able lock 
from Hogue. Isn't that what they call it? It's the same thing. Omega Springs, as far as I know. We didn't do the hardware check. Should we do that? Get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive. Very recommendable. You can find them right down in the uh, description. Um, I think um, <laughs> I'm about to find out something else very annoying about this model. T6. Oh, is that a T6 pivot? Poopo -poo Town! Oh my God, T6 pivot, come on. T8 on the hardware is what we're looking for, but unfortunately we're looking at three T6 screws per side plus the pocket clip. My God, is it really that big of a deal? No, if you have quality tools, you're gonna be fine, but T6 pivot, come on, stupid. T8 or, or better, right? Why? Because the bits, the teeth and the bits, and the grooves on the inside of the fasteners are larger. They're less likely to strip. Yes, you know, that's true, even if you are looking at quality stuff like WIA drivers and WIA bits, right? It, they're just better. I know people will disagree with me, I don't care. T8 or, or higher, that's the way to go, especially on a pivot. Um, we already weighed it. Did we do blade stock thickness? Let's measure that. Um, my calipers. It looks to be about 125 thousandths, that's my guess. I think that's my usual guess. Maybe it's a little thinner. That's 115 thousandths. Let's go again just to be sure. Yeah, 115 thousandths. So, okay, not a super thick blade. In fact, not thick at all. Ergonomically, this knife is very comfortable. I gotta be honest. If I was gonna do a whole lot of outside work with a knife, continuous cutting, this is actually pretty well suited for that. The handle shape and, you know, it looks like there's a lot of stuff to snag your hands on, but honestly, this is really comfortable. There's so much handle room, right? You really can move around and that's the benefit of having a lot of people like, ew, blade handle razor is so bad, right? Including me, but yeah, there's actually plenty of real estate and it's very comfortable. This knife is, it's nice to hang on to. You got a little thing back here, but... We'll talk about that. Pocket clip's not that bad. There's so much handle, and this pocket clip is relatively short. It really just doesn't bother me. You have a nice, fully flat ground blade that gets pretty darn thin down here, and that thumb stud's not in the cutting path, so you really can put a lot of power into your cuts. Let me emphasize this. As a cutting tool, which these things are, right, the stuff that I review, it's easy to lose sight of that because we all view them as mystical fidget objects. Um, as a tool, this is pretty good. Um, as, you know, so I imagine with me, you're looking at a pile of cardboard that needs to be broken down. Deploy it, start using it. It's gonna work, right? It's just a lot of obnoxious little design things that knife enthusiasts like me are gonna nitpick. Studies and observations group, which I don't know why I think that's funny, but okay, that's what we call SOG now. Um, Agus AT, Cryo D2, right? So we have a paragraph on the front of the knife that, that never looks good. Um, but it's there, and it's not really hurting anything. And then on the other side, they just didn't put anything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, okay. And I, I, I do appreciate the fact that they have, um, you know, given you so many different options for colors, right? If you want, like, sort of a swamp theme um, or, like, a tactical tundra theme, right? You can do that. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, colors and things. And I'm just, I'm just joking around. Obviously, we all like to have the option for color, right? And I think that's cool. That's nice different uh, coatings. This one's more of a sort of a grayish coating and then we have a black coating, right? There's some different options there. I think, I believe these to be real coatings too, which is good because D2 is not a stainless steel. The blade is really good. We have a nice tip, fully flat ground uh, geometry. And like I said, it gets nice and thin down here and it's nice and sharp. The bevel is also even on both sides, not seeing any wonkiness. And I don't believe it's any different on this guy. This guy's been used a little bit more, right? Yeah, real nice. The blade is probably the best part of this. It's just, it's either too short or too long. Like, either, like this This just makes me want to have a longer blade, or if they insist on the shorter blade, with the considering the length of the handle, 2.9 inches, guys. Make it legal for the three inch folks. We're not gonna miss it. It's like, oh, I can't cut this because instead of a 3.1 inch blade, I have a 2.9 inch blade. Probably not, right? Not gonna be chopping any pineapples in half with these guys, but you know, for EDC stuff, you're gonna be okay. 
Let's move on here because we definitely have not gotten to the most obnoxious part. We do have a mounting position left-handed. This is an ambidextrous lock, ambidextrous deployment system, right? So you uh, can mount the pocket clip on either side, and I think that's great. Lefties can enjoy it. What is this? Oh, this doesn't sit right with me. I am very bothered with this. I don't like lanyard holes. Um, I hate lanyard holes. I hate it when lanyard holes take priority over the pocket clip. You can see here what happened with the pair of three. It was cataclysmic. <laughs> I'm going to be overly dramatic, but in my head, cataclysmic. Um, well, I had to use an MXG deep carry clip to bypass this hole so that I could have the clip mounted, in my opinion, in the appropriate position because otherwise the darn thing was sitting like this in my pocket. Now, this knife still carries pretty deep, right? But what we have here is not only a lanyard hole that's being prioritized over the clip, it's also sitting on this side of the knife. So we've extended the handle to make room for this thing, and we've stopped the blade short of this area, which is the only reason that the blade to handle ratio looks like this. It's so we could have this. Is there another re am I missing something? This is why that the blade is imagine this. This is gone and we just have, you know, a backspacer that ends right here. Well, the blade in theory could extend out to here. That's a meaningful amount of blade. <laughs> I just don't get it. Why is this here? I know like, you know, some sort of professional lanyard user is going to come to the rescue of this design and go, you know, well, you know, there's a special kind of lanyard in a tactical scenario, of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> we don't need this. We don't need this. This is, this is, I, this is bad. I, I, you know, like you're going to make like eight people happy. Everybody else I think will just be annoyed. Um, the funny thing is, is that, you know, while the handle is spacious, that thing also stops you from utilizing the last half an inch to two thirds of an inch of handle room because you stop right here. This is a comfortable knife. And I, again, I'm not trying to say it's not usable. It is. It's very usable, very utilitarian. There's just so many unnecessary things, right? Uh, if you insist on these ratios, 2.9 inch blade, get rid of this in all scenarios. There is no scenario where we absolutely have to have that lanyard loop there. We can have it back here. Just flip it over and put it, you can have this stupid dangly lanyard loop hanging off the back of it. That's fine. Other knives do that. Why, it, there's, you're ne no one is ever going to convince me that there is a very specific advantage to having the lanyard loop on that side. Go ahead and type me up a paragraph down there. I'll read it and then disagree with it because there's no way that it makes that much of a difference. This does not need to be here. Um, it can be, you know, it can just be a little hole right here as everybody else does, or it can be a little hole right here, right? It just doesn't need to be like, look, this is also, it's in the wrong place. Here we go. Ta-da! This has been solved. The lanyard loop thing, the lanyard hole thing has been solved. We don't need experimental nonsense like this. This works. Thank you, Benchmade Bugout. That's great. You did it right. This is ridiculous. Get rid of it in all scenarios, right? If we insist on these ratios, the short blade, long handle thing, then you can make full use of the handle, but we need a 2.9 inch blade so that it makes sense legally. Or we could just have a larger blade and have better ratios, right? And then you can still keep all the other elements. The uh, assisted thing is not that big of a deal. The cherry on top, I think, is the price. Um, these are 85 bucks. Why? Why? Assisted. I mean, it's, it's colorful, right? GRN, D2. Again, I know people say, oh, you're doing that thing where you reduce the value to the materials alone. No, um, not necessarily. Uh, we have examples of other knives that are absolutely in the same quality territory, right? So if you 
if, if somebody by hand creates the liners, the GRN material, all of the hardware and the blade, well, that's going to cost substantially more than something that was the same thing but made by machine, right? These are machine produced. These are produced the same way that, you know, your, all of the CGRB, Civivi, and stuff like that, you know, even some of that, like, there are American knives from Kershaw that are sporting better materials at this price point, right? And the same, you know, level of production quality, right? The same tier, the same caliber of production quality. Why are these $85? Competition in any direction makes this look like not a good option. The only reason, the only reason to pick this up is if you like how it looks and you just like the idea of having like a good, like if you just, you're just like, yeah, that looks nice. Like controlling a reasonably, just not a super big blade and having a lot of handle room. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, this these fall into such a weird place. Going up. $10 will, you know, you'll find a substantially better knife. Going down $10 or $20, you'll find a substantially better knife. These just don't make any sense to me. Um, I don't, I, I don't like these. Now to the owners of these knives, if you guys like them, you know, Hey, power to you. Uh, I'm not trying to come down on anybody who enjoys these people who already own these knives. If you're watching, right? Maybe you're flipping this knife. Maybe you're watching this video for reaffirmation on your purchase. If you like it, keep liking it. I don't like these. I don't think they make any sense. But, you know, okay, it's, it's going to happen sometimes. The links are down there. If you guys want to use them, you can tell me to kick rocks and you can use my links <laughs> if you want to. They're down there. Um, but that's, that's my conclusion here. Interesting. Happy for the opportunity to take a look. Definitely not my cup of tea. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.